Foundation Community Fellow, and my focus work is helping to close the gender gap and getting more women involved in participating in contributing to Wikipedia and the community of uh, Wikimedia. And I had a little idea. Whenever I'm at Wikimania, this is my second, so or most Wikipedia-ish events like uh, Wikipedia Academy or uh, whatever, <laughs> other conferences about Wikipedia, I rarely get to actually edit Wikipedia. I barely even get to check my watch list. So when I get home, I'm like, oh God, what has happened to my articles? What do I have to clean up, et cetera? And it's a lot of work. So hey, Corsells, nice to see you. So I said, well, damn it, I want to edit Wikipedia at Wikimania and like, actually make some constructive edits and not just some talk page comments and a few maintenance things here and there. How many of you are active Wikipedia editors? This is a really great ratio. How many of you have never edited but want to edit? How, okay, cool, all right. So we've got a great group of people who can kind of provide some support maybe for one another. And um, we can even get you accounts started and some simple things um, if, you haven't, if you don't have a Wikipedia account yet. So the point of this is I'm gonna do a brief talk, kind of a lightning talk about 10 women. Actually, it's nine women and one thing that, <laughs> thing that women go to um, that are, have existing articles in Wikipedia, but they need expansion. And in English Wikipedia, they generally need expansion. But of course, this means they need expansion in any language you're comfortable in editing. So just because we don't speak the same language doesn't mean we can't collaboratively edit together in the same room, right? So translations, organizing of articles, cleanup, your task here today as a Wikipedian can be as big or small as you want. And I hope that everybody will leave this with a little bit of energy from contributing about some great and interesting women in their own language or project. So you can upload photos, you can work on Wikiquote, whatever you feel inspired to do. So um, thanks for coming, and this is gonna be an experiment. Uh, we don't have enough tables. I was supposed to have some round tables, so um, we can figure out how we wanna break into groups uh, when we're done here. And we might only get 30 to 40 minutes worth of editing together, but I think it'll be kind of cool, and um, yeah. So I um, have actually uh, created a pirate pad, which is like Etherpad, but has a cooler name. And um, I'll sh pull that up really quick here. So if it reconnects, and if you type in this URL, piratepad.net backslash 10 women, um, I, I wanna keep track of who we all are, so I can like drop by your talk pages and say hi, and thank you for coming. And, um, this is a collaborative, um, my screen is not, there we go. It's a collaborative editing space, kind of like Google Docs, um, but it's open source. And uh, you'll sign in with your username or whatever name you want. There's a little chat box. And we have different teams for the 10 subjects. So. Is sensitive or space or something? Uh, probably, yeah. Oh, I just moved this. Can you give the URL again? Yes, yes, it's piratepad.net, in lowercase. No spaces, so pirate, like arg, pad, like lily pad, p-a-d, dot net, or forward slash, 10, the number 10, one zero, women, in lowercase. It might be, it probably is. Okay, sorry about that. You're in, yeah, I see you. It makes me happy to see everybody logging in there. So, um, we're gonna use this as our main workspace. So you can put your username, and if you don't have one, we'll add it there once you find the team you wanna be on. And your team might be just you, your team might have five people. We all might want to edit on the same person if we feel like it. So we'll figure it out. So let's get started. Oh, yeah, yes, and there'll be conflicts of, of that, yeah. So let's get started, and I'm going to show you 10 women here that we're going to work on today. First, Adrienne Boland, French woman, 1896 to 1975. She was a French pilot. She flew over the English Channel in 1920, and she was the first woman to fly over the Andes Mountains in South America in 1921. When she landed in Santiago, Chile, the French consul didn't show up because he thought her story of landing in Santiago was an April Fool's joke. She has a, a nice article in French, can definitely use some expansion in other languages. Adriana Oguin, uh, she's from Valparaiso, Chile, was born in 1911. She graduated in 1938 with her law degree. In Valparaiso, she worked in law with a focus around women's rights. She founded the Association of National Housewives, which might sound a little funny now, but back in the 1940s and 50s, you know, it makes a little more sense, I suppose. 
1952, she became the Minister of Justice. She was the first woman in Latin America to hold such a position. Mary Alice McWinney. Some of these I started, so I guess I'm a little biased on some of the subject matter, stub-wise. 1920 to 1980, she was an authority on krill, and I, if you don't, they're little tiny shrimp um, that whales like to eat. McWinney was the first woman to sail aboard the National Science Foundation's ship in the Antarctic. In 1974, with, she actually went through hell, if I can use the word, to get this position. She became the first woman to serve as a chief scientist at an Antarctic research center. The NSF eventually allowed her to be the director. Ruby Hiroz, an American chemist. She was actually uh, uh, American-Japanese. She was a groundbreaking polio researcher. Without the research she, she did, we might not have a cure for polio. Uh, she also suffered from terrible hay fever, so she made it one of her professional goals to uh, help develop um, the, the, the right chemistry, I suppose, to uh, create uh, hay fever medicine. So we have a lot to thank her for. And she has like two lines on English Wikipedia. She's one of the 10 women to be acknowledged by the American Chemical Society in 1940. May Gorslin Preston Slauson. I don't know if there's a redirect for her. We might need to shorten that name or something. In 1858 to 1943, she was American. She was a suffragette and a feminist, hardcore stuff. She graduated in 1880 from Cornell. And she was the first woman in the United States to get her PhD in philosophy. Comandante Ramona. She died in 2006. She's a Mayan woman from Mexico. She's, she was a Zapatista officer, a revolutionary group from Mexico. And Ramona was her pseudonym. No one knows her real name. Hence why she's wearing that, that face mask in her photograph. She, was, she actually captured the town of San Cristobal de, de las Casas in 1994. She led the capture of this community. She had cancer and received a kidney transplant in 1995, which prolonged her life until 2006. And she co-founded the National Indigenous Congress, which is one of the most important and revolutionary organizations in Mexico to help uh, further indigenous peoples in the country. Harriet Nahani. She, from 1935 to 2007. She's a, a Pakadots from Canada, a, a native woman from Canada. She survived residential schools. These are schools that um, they did them in the United, they had them in the United States as well, that the government um, moved onto the reservation and basically built schools for Indian children to attend. And the Indian children had to basically become white. So they'd cut their hair, they would not allow them to speak their native language, et cetera. And it, in Canada, it was incredibly terrible things happened to people. And after she survived the experience, she became an outspoken advocate uh, and, would, and openly discussed the abuse, the rape and murder, uh, mass graves, the murder of children, the terrible things that happened and that she experienced there. She was incredibly active in retaining indigenous traditions and protecting the land. She was arrested uh, during a blockade that she, was a, she helped lead um, when land and her husband's, her husband is also uh, Aboriginal or indigenous in Canada, and they were trying to expand the Sea to Sky Highway, which is one of the big highways that go up on the west coast of uh, British Columbia, and they were wanting to do it onto his, his community's land, native land, and she led the, the blockade for it, and she was arrested, and she died of cancer that was undiagnosed within two weeks. Alicia Moreau de Justo. And I, I don't want to sound like a downer when I'm going, she died of cancer and was arrested. I mean, it's tragic things, but these people contributed so much and we need to preserve their legacy. And if we can do it through Wikipedia, we're doing something pretty great. 1885 to 1986, she's Ar Argentinian, but she was born in England to French parents. She moved there when she was a child. She graduated from college and she was the fourth woman physician in um, Argentina. She was a socialist and a feminist, and she founded the National Feminine Union. She published a lot of books about women's roles and was key in helping women gain the right to vote in Argentina. She has a street in Buenos Aires named after her. No Ito. In, she was 1895 to 1923. She was from Japan. She was amazing. She published a feminist art and culture magazine, her own zine, in the early 1900s. 
She translated political works and was the first person to translate the works of Emma Goldman, feminist anarchist, um, into Japanese. She was in an arranged marriage with a man who had visited America, and she really wanted to go to America, probably to meet Emma Goldman, who wouldn't. And she um, married, basically, it was an arranged marriage. She was forced into it, but she kind of didn't fight it because he had just came back from America, and he had promised her, I'm going to take you to America. Well, he didn't, and he was a jerk, and he completely disagreed with her lifestyle and her interests and her art and her music and everything. And eventually, she left him for one of her professors in school, and that didn't quite work out. And she ended up marrying Sakai Osuji, who is a, and I'm sure my pronunciations are a little rough, and please correct me if I'm wrong. He was a, one of the most prominent anarchists in Japan at the time. They were with his nephew, who was nine years old, and there was a terrible, terrible earthquake in, uh, in, in Japan, the Great Kanto Earthquake, and, in 1923, and chaos erupted, uh, you know, riots, et cetera. And um, the military police basically beat her and her husband and her nephew, and they died together, the three of them. And she's one of the most underwritten about women in Japanese history, and sh but her legacy is something we can help preserve on Wikipedia today. Our final one, on a more interesting note, maybe a little more exciting note, phase one. Has anybody here been to phase one while on their visit to Washington, D.C.? If you're a old enough to go and you have interest. It's a lesbian bar in, in uh, D.C. It's a dive bar, if you know what that is. It was founded in 1971 by two gay men, Alan and Chris, and they actually opened it up in their own gay bar. And it was, uh, they built a new dance floor for it, and actually the, the, one of the sons for the Hecht Company, who, which was a big department store brand in the United States, funded the money to build the dance floor. And it was the first nightclub, this bar, to have same-sex people dance together, which was illegal in Washington, D.C. They hosted the largest queer music and art festival ever on the East Coast in 2008. And it's the oldest conti continually operated lesbian nightclub in the United States, which is pretty interesting that's in Washington, DC. And it's like two blocks from the Capitol building. So th these are going to be our 10 women in 10 minutes. Well, that was 10 minutes in theory. And thank you, um, Kaldari, who is the co-founder of Wiki Project Feminism, for helping me gather these names, and Adrienne Alex from Wikimedia France, who uh, also helped me gather some names up, too. So there we go. Have you found something that interests you? OK. And for those who are coming in late, we're going to be editing Wikipedia today. And I know we don't have the greatest setup, but we can try to make it work collaboratively, right? So if you log on. Oops. You will see I have um, a pirate pad, which is an ether pad, um, up, and you can log into piratepad.net forward slash 10 women, lowercase, and you can sign up for, oh, thank you to whoever posted those, uh, uh, the, uh, oh, Caroline, thank you, uh, the articles directly uh, in English Wikipedia, um, and you can sign up for what team you want to be on. And if you could use your username, that'd be awesome, and if you don't have a username yet in a Wikipedia account, we can do that. Um, and of course, if you, you can work in any language you want to, but I'd love to see some cross-language collaboration in the same room, supporting each other in whatever language you want to work in our project. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to think about who you want to. Yes. For those of us that didn't learn from Judy, okay. Okay. are there any sources here? Anybody from home? Yeah, I don't have, I don't, don't, I didn't bring books and so. Yeah, who has laptops? And who, oh, who, okay, how about who does not have a laptop with them? And that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. We can. We can. Well, one person can use mine, I suppose. So I, share my we have iPads too, which could be great for sources. We can also use our iPhones. I didn't bring books and magazines, and I. I have to admit, I haven't had time. I've been traveling for three weeks, and I am a pity party because I didn't gather all the, all of the data up that I wanted to to have the sources. So please forgive me. But we know how to do that because we're Wikipedians. Yes. Can you edit on an iPad? I know Sue Gardner's done it, but she said it's a little difficult, but I'm sure. I've gotten better at it in the last few days. So this might be a learning experience. Sue, did you mock when you put your username on the pirate pad, mock whether or not you have a laptop so that we can see whether one group has been stopped using 
Good idea. And again, this is an experiment. So I'm going to be contacting everybody who chooses to participate on the Pirate Pad to kind of get your feedback on how we can do this in the future. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that true? <laughs> okay, that's new to me also. I didn't know that. Does Etherpad have a limit? Does anyone know? Really? I never knew. I'm sorry. I never knew. I never knew. So how about you log off when you're done? How about you look? Because we don't need the pirate pad if you can just see it right here. So when you're done, or have someone else sign you up. You don't have to log in. Have someone sign you up. Does anybody want me to sign them up on something on the pirate pad? Again, this is an experiment. I'm having like severe guilt right now for not like being more organized. So, so does anybody who can't get on Ether on, on Pirate Pad need to sign up for someone? We get Pirate Pad, but it won't let us scroll down. It only goes to see movie, and then you can't see anything else. Open source. I think we need to know. We need a better open source technology for this, right? I could. Do you want me to drop it in a Google Doc or do something else with it? I can put it on Wiki, I suppose. Shit. Oh God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm on camera, and there's young people in the room. And so, what can I do to make this Etherpad thing better? Okay. But then I'm. Uh, all we really need it is because I want to keep track of who's here. And if you found that someone you want to edit, look them up on Wikipedia, and maybe we can come into groups. Who? So, if you need me to review the women again, I can do that. So, how about we just do this? This was more of a tool for me to know who's here, because I want to be able to talk to people after, we, after we're done, because I like to do that. So if you're able to add yourself in, cool. If not, we'll survive, OK? And now let's go back really quick, and we're going to gather into groups of people who want to edit certain people, OK? And you're going to move your chairs around. I know it takes a little bit of work, but I'll buy you guys all drinks later on at the after party. Oh, they're free, so it'll be even easier for me. <laughs> I don't have, I'm a fellow, I don't have the money for expenses. So who wants to be on Team Adrian? Adrian's the pilot. Okay, Team Adrian, how about we go over here near Daniel Case? There's Daniel. Adrian was the pilot who flew the, over the Andes. Okay, so we're gonna be over in that corner with you, all right? Or, and Adriana, she was the um, uh, first minister of justice, the first woman to hold a cabinet post in Latin America. Who would like to write about her today? And that's okay, she won't take it personal. Mary Alice McWinney, she was into the little shrimp, the krill, and she was uh, the first woman to do the Antarctic. Um, okay, great. And you're going to be working with the very cool Mary Gardner, who was our keynote speaker. So, so you guys can maybe come over here and hang out over here. Ruby, she was a polio and, and, and hay fever. All right, we have some hay fever sufferers who are going to write about um, Ruby. So um, where does Ruby want to meet? How about in the middle here, maybe? We can kind of meet over here. M May, May Slauson. Okay, you two can find out where you guys want to hang out. Ramona. Ramona, Ramona is the Zapatista, anonymous. She's who I'd want to write on right now, but okay. She won't take a personal. Harriet, Harriet is from Canada. She's the indigenous woman who was, um, anybody, anybody for Harriet? Okay, we have more people than we have. Alicia. Alicia was the first physician in Argentina. We have one, two, two for Alicia. Two Ada campers for Alicia. And no Ito. We have a no Ito group. Okay, cool, right here. And if you haven't, I, I know this is kind of a weird, strange experiment, and thank you for your patience, but maybe we can all gather together in our groups. So no Ito is going to hang out here. And, um, a lot of these women, their images are going to be in the public domain, so we can always have a farming where we can gather images up of people and upload them to commons. We can write about them in Wikipedia, improve on their content, copy edit, and I'm going to hum around and see how I can help people out. Oh, God, and phase one, I forgot. Who wants to write about phase one? We've got one. And I've got a good article that can serve as your basis for inspiration, so... Team Ruby, Team Ruby is gathering here. You guys, is there Team Ruby yet? Hi. Oh, we haven't yet. Oh, it's really great to meet you. I'm not going to edit. I'm going to go over to this other seminar because I'm just going to listen to. 
I'm yeah, no that problem. Our, I, I want to do a big event next month about diversity and women in all the just technology in general, because I also have an internet freedom. And there's a lot of, as you know, there's a lot of cultural barriers. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go around the room, and we're going to share what we've done on our people. Do you want to speak? Do you want to talk about your group? Hello. Oh, that sounds very funny. Don't talk closely to the microphone. Save your edits. Save your edits. Oh. <laughs> Go back and edit it if you can't later. Try to avoid edit conflicts. <laughs> push, push your save button. Push your save buttons. Push your save button because your people are gonna. Sh we're gonna share what we've done, and we're gonna start back here with these two. Okay, everybody, we're going to start sharing what we've edited. So let's all calm down on the editing front. And we're going to share what we've edited. And what we kind of have done. What kind of, what kind of improvements have you made to the article? You know, stuff like that. What are you two doing back here? We did May Gorslin Preston Slauson, the lady with the longest name of all, and uh, she turned out to be a fascinating. Uh, she was an American suffragist. She got the first PhD awarded in philosophy to a woman in the United States. She was a uh, prison chaplain. <laughs> Yeah, um, we found out what her dissertation was on, and we got that. And we also found out that she authored a book of poems in 1920. Well done, well done. Barn stars for you. All right, what did we do over here? Dan, okay. We okay. We did, yeah, we did Adrienne Bolland, the, you know, the French woman who was the first to fly a plane across the Andes. And... After looking through various French and German language sources, we found a great article in the Air France and Flight magazine in which we learned that she became a pilot because she was deep in gambling debts when she was 24. <laughs> oh my God, that is crazy. There's a great story. There's a, and her, uh, her indulgent habits didn't, uh, you know, didn't stop when she became a pilot. She was also the first woman to fly across the English Channel. And uh, when she, after she finished that flight, she went up to Brussels to have party with her friends, and she read headlines in the papers the next day that said she was lost at sea, and she said, I may have drowned that night, but it certainly wasn't in water. That is amazing. Are you serious? Okay, that is why we, that is awesome. Okay, what do we do over here? So we've been working on the article about local establishment and longest continuously operating lesbian bar in the United States, phase one. In DC. Uh, in DC, so we added a little bit of structure to the article, so, um, an info box, and a homework assignment for me to go take pictures of it this weekend. So it's in your neighborhood. It is in my neighborhood. And I edited the Lucky Magazine's uh, article, which is the list of cover models. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. So Lela has uh, much more information about uh, Malisha Muru de Rusto. And uh, yeah, I added uh, some more detailed biographical structures in uh, the German Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. And just added some links in the very good art article in the Spanish Wikipedia to edit together with the articles. Like, they did this amazing trans language, you know. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, group, what are we up to? What have you been doing? Uh, I was translating three stubs in the French Wikipedia because there was, no, uh, apart from the pilot, French pilot, there was no article on this fabulous woman on French Wikipedia. All right, so we've got new articles in 
And, uh, yeah, so she, and she did the, the brand new stub in the French Wikipedia on Ruby Hirose while I was researching sources on Ruby Hirose for the English Wikipedia. And while I was researching, the French stub showed up on the Google search. <laughs> <laughs> To get, we didn't manage to get a whole lot done. We found some sources, added a few sentences, and about, well, probably need to get more of it done in the next week because there's so few sources on this woman. So Terry, but you did find her birth date. You found... We found, the birth year. We found about three yeah. different candidates for her birth year. Yeah. We, uh, it was difficult finding sources on her. We checked books.google.com, scholar.google.com, um, ancestry, census, and the best was a cemetery site that talked about her parents. So there we had the names of her parents, and we found out that she was uh, second generation Japanese. Several of her siblings had passed away, but she was the first in her family to go to university. And uh, yeah, just found, once we found the cemetery site, we had a lot of dates, all the schools that she went to and where she worked, and, and that was great. That's awesome, that's great, that's great. Well done, everybody. And you also edited about the governor of Washington State, who was a woman. They went to the same school together, or not together, but in the same university. <laughs> and we've done you guys, oh yes, why hello. What have you guys been doing? Okay, so we found out that um, Noe Ito had really a, a wonderfully short, scandal-filled life. So after she graduated from high school, she had an affair or relationship with one of her, we were trying to figure out what the best word was. In the source, it said she became the mistress of her teacher. Yeah. Um, you know, but like, what was it exactly, right? So like, that was a lot of fun. What word are we gonna pick? I think we went with relation. She had a relationship with, with one of her teachers and they ended up having two children together. And, and he was he, fired. When was this? Um, 19, what, what year was it? 19, uh, 16, I think, in Japan, yeah. Um, and then we got into yet another interesting discovery. Um, the article had originally said that she was um, beaten to death, um, but apparently that may not be accurate. She may have been strangled to death. Uh -huh. Yet another source said that. So, you know, we had to just figure out how to solve that dispute. So, a lot of fun. And you got to do it together yeah. in a room and not on a talk page. Yeah. So, well done, everybody. It was a homicide. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very dramatic stuff. So, and finally, our last group, we have our youngest editors, I believe. Would you guys like to share about what? They're actually what, very older. They're very mature. They just very. So, would you like anybody like to share? Would you like to share anything about what you sure. did? Yeah, you can share the mic if anybody wants to talk. So, we were reading about Mary Alice McWinney, who studied the biology of krill. <laughs> um, so, we found her obituary and we added a couple sentences on the page in her biography about when she got her doctorate and when she taught and where she received her doctorate from. And we added the references and okay. um, we added um, the fact that while working on the research station in Antarctica, her assistant was Mary Odile Cahoon, and we provided a link to that individual's name and gave a reference for the information about um, her work at McMurdo. Everybody for for oh, I I didn't know you guys like were really like hanging out. I'm the, I, feel like I'm terrible. I am terrible. I am so sorry. What have you been up to? We cre we created a, a an article about Noe Ito uh, that earlier was mentioned uh, on the Swedish language version of Wikipedia. Yep. So we. Yeah, we want it well, so badly. Very diligent, so I just like raised my hand <laughs> to the wall, and I just so because we have and we have a receipt of that. We have. Yes. So and we based it on um, well, you found some external external that yeah, some uh, it was partly translation. And it worked. And but yes, <laughs> yeah, sure. Nine. 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 Nine.
Thanks, guys. Um, hi, I got my very first article put up today. Um, I had actually drafted it about a year ago, but it got bounced, and I didn't know how to um, get it corrected. So a previous session, uh, somebody looked at it and realized that I had used a template, but um, somehow I had left a, a space and not knowing what the space was or the problems, and, and I had gotten feedback that I really just didn't understand and didn't have the time to try to figure out. So um, the, the lovely Wikipedians um, got the article up, and we've been uh, revising it. And the advantage when um, there's an article that's missing is that uh, once it gets put up, other people can correct uh, the problems or, add or backfill. And so it's given me the courage to try to start the article for um, the other woman uh, from the 19th century who is on the Anglican church calendar that, uh, again, it's, uh, the, they're the only two uh, red links on the, uh, the Church of England calendar. So one is now blue and actually shows uh, Elizabeth Ferrard, and it turns out sometimes it's with two R's and sometimes it's with one. I mean, three R's or two. And uh, we'll try to get Harriet Monsell um, up later today. That's so awesome. thanks. So you, you found the help you needed here at Wikipedia and Wikimania, and now you are inspired. Any new updates over here? This is our last update. Everybody updated? Okay. Uh, I looked for uh, some references for the Elizabeth Ferrar article and uh, then got distracted by an article linked there, which was full of very offensive grammar issues. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so grammar issues have been resolved. Well, everyone is awesome. You guys have done great. Thank you so much for participating and helping to organize this little bit of chaos in, and or maybe calm in the middle of Wikimania. And of course, any of our uh, women participants uh, women of Wikimedia are going to be having our lunch in the Grand Ballroom. We can head there right now. It's going to be catered. And uh, we've got Barn Stars up here, and I've got Barn Stars in my hand. And uh, thank you so much for participating, and I look forward to seeing you guys all on Wiki and continuing all of this. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.